And good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Cleveland, Ohio, where we are here for day two now for us of Evangelism Matters. And this is our show, Inside Evangelism Matters, where we recap some of what has happened during the day. And we give you a little preview of what might be coming up in the next couple of days. Uh, to recap what Evangelism Matters is, we have gathered, we, like if I had anything to do with it, but the church has gathered some 400 people from the Episcopal Church, from throughout the church, to come here and share ideas and grow in their evangelism programs and do that sort of work. It is, it's amazing. I, I wish you could actually feel through the television or through your webcam or through however you're watching the, the energy in the room that is here. Uh, these are people who care, who have been transformed, and who are here to share it. If you watched earlier in our channels at evangelismmatters.org, you saw two of the plenaries, both in English and in Spanish, simulcast, uh, of to the officially opening up the program. What you'll see later on this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the first worship of the program. And let me tell you something, if you've never seen a whole bunch of evangelists worshiping together, this is a fun time. So that will be coming up at 7 p.m. Then tomorrow, what you'll begin to see are some 20 or so workshops that will also be broadcast. I mean, we have a whole team here that is working on this to make sure that you at home, if you were not able to join us here in snowy Cleveland, you lucky souls, you're not just kidding. Cleveland's wonderful, but it is, it is, uh, it is cold. I'll, I'll grant you that. I'm from LA, which reminds me, by the way, I didn't say my name. My name is Father Lorenzo Labrija from the Episcopal Diocese of Los Angeles. And with that, all of that introduction work done, it is my pleasure now to introduce our guest this evening. And man, what a, if you ever just feel evangelism sort of like flowing and oozing out of someone, that is what you would get from our first guest. Our first guest is the presiding bishop's canon for, and let me see, make sure I get all this right, evangelism, reconciliation, and creation care. Ladies and gentlemen, canon Stephanie Spellers. Good evening, Father Lorenzo. Thanks for joining us here tonight. And, and of course, out of all the, with, with I'm sure all the extra time that you have in, in your many multiple Copious times. Copious spare time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tonight in particular at this conference, you're here for evangelism. Yes. So I have to begin with that. What does evangelism mean? In, uh, we've heard people say, ooh, that's like a bad word for us. Oh, yeah. What does evangelism mean and why does it matter? Why this? Evangelism matters, and here I am like already <laughs> like naming the, the name of the conference, but, but actually- I can see how the name came about. Yeah, how about How that? do we name this thing? It's about evangelism and we should <laughs> and say that it, it matters. matters. <laughs> yeah, that's how it happens. Uh, because <laughs> frankly, we've been kind of ambivalent about, uh, about evangelism. But um, I think for a lot of Episcopalians, we're really good at saying what evangelism is not. And a part of what we're trying to do here with Evangelism Matters and throughout the Episcopal Church's really fairly new evangelism ministries is to say, here's what evangelism can be for us. Here's a positive approach to evangelism. Here's an approach that's humble, that's curious, that's open, that's mutual, uh, that's beautiful. All the things we think of when we think about the church we love, this Episcopal Church, what if we fed that into our practice of evangelism? So oh. the way that many of us have come to understand it, are you ready? Okay. All right. I'm so like, I should take <laughs> because, notes probably. Yeah, yeah. You may, you may want to <laughs> do that. Um, we've, we've actually come, and by we, I mean good grief, it's probably about 50 people over the last year have participated in, in discerning, like, so what is a practical definition of evangelism that, that Episcopalians can grab onto and say, that's us. Okay. Um, and what we've said is that, it, that evangelism is first and foremost a spiritual practice. So let's take it out of whatever, you know, kind of this functional, we gotta get people into the church and evangelism uh, is how we do it. No, no. This is a spiritual practice. And it's a spiritual, well, it's a spiritual practice where, um, where we really, and here's the, here's the definition, we seek, mm -hmm. name, and celebrate Jesus' loving presence in the stories of all people, then wow. invite everyone to more. To more, to, to more. be, oh. That is, you know, that's something that you can sit with for a while. Exactly. And, and it's not, so here's, I think, where maybe we've gone wrong in mm -hmm. the past. And well-meaning as it may have been, mm -hmm. at somewhere along the lines, I think we equated evangelism with marketing. 
Yes. A very secular term of how do we get more people into pews and how do we get people there because otherwise we're going to die as a church. So, so that's evangelism. Why evangelism we sell is sell our church. That's right. Sell, sell, sell. Yeah. And this is no. a completely different way. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's just not wrong. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad evangelist, bad evangelist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and, and frankly, that understanding of evangelism is one of the major reasons why Episcopalians run screaming from the word, not as much now. I think having a presiding bishop for the last almost three that years who, who claims the title of Chief Evangelism Officer, CEO, I think that has helped us to, to do this culture work, to embrace this culture work. But, um, and then there are other, others of us, lots of us, who are working behind the scenes, working in teams of all kinds, different organizations, and together we are trying to create some frameworks, again, that Episcopalians can embrace. So that we're not living in the negative, we're not living in the, well, we don't, and we don't, and we don't, and we're not. And instead saying, this is what we are, this is what we do. We mm. seek. We are, you ask Episcopalians, what do we do or what's unique about us? One of the first things they're going to tell you is that we're curious, that we're humble. We're not trying to tell everybody well, everything. I've met some that perhaps all right, all right, on right. the humble scale are not <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Always humble, 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 humble. Yes. Um, which, which really means that we don't like going around telling people what to do. That kind of humility. Yeah. That so many Episcopalians will say, I never want to be the person who goes up to someone I don't know or someone I do know and tells them, you need this. What we do is we seek. So we're like, well then what if we take that approach and say that evangelism starts with seeking? It starts with looking around for the loving presence of Jesus everywhere. Having eyes to see the risen Christ in our midst. We do that. And then after we seek, when you see Jesus' loving presence in your own life, in the lives of others, you name it. In other words, use your words. Um, this is probably, there are a lot of hard parts actually throughout this definition of evangelism. And I think honestly the naming may be one of the most difficult for a lot of us because we have, we have like on loop Francis of Assisi saying to us, That's you right. know, <laughs> preach the gospel at all times, and whenever use words necessary. when necessary. That's right. And the thing that we're just trying to plant out there is how about preach the gospel at all times, use, the, use words, it's necessary. It's very necessary. That in this moment when people see you and say, oh, what a wonderful person and look at that soup kitchen she works in and look at how you know, she's so helpful with the homeless and look at how they march on the streets in order to stop gun violence. What good people. They're not saying what good Christians. Mm. Because in a lot of people's minds, Christianity doesn't equate with the way that we live. So we have to say, this is Christian. This is what Christianity looks like. And when we you do see... this soup kitchen because we are Christian. Exactly. We march on the streets because we are exactly. Christian. Because we're called to yeah. do this. This is what Jesus looks like in your midst. You know, yesterday we had yeah. Frank Logue on the show, mm -hmm. and uh, Father Frank was one of the things he said, and and, and I think this uh, this really goes to the definition you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Says it begins with the with the transformation that Christ made in our lives. So yeah. if you're asking us to look for Christ in other people, mm -hmm. to look for the, I think one of the workshops is about holy listening, right? Being able mm -hmm. to know when people are yearning for that conversation yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. It, but it, it, belo it begins though with that transformation of our own hearts. Right, listening, seeking the loving presence of Jesus in our own stories. And we have them, we have those stories. But frankly, a lot of Episcopalians, we've been just, told or thought on some level, but I don't have a theological degree. And I'm not the priest, and I'm not this. So my story or the sharing of my story doesn't matter. Oh. And part of what, we ha what we're trying desperately to turn is so that people can look at their own lives and say, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. Oh look, there's Jesus. That was there's Jesus. A, yeah, that he's moment, everywhere. That moment. He's yeah. everywhere. And all of our talk about incarnational Christianity, this idea of a fleshy God, yeah. this, this understanding of evangelism assumes of course God is all around us. Of course Jesus is here. You're not bringing Jesus to anybody, but you are helping them to name and to celebrate, there's that, when they do see this love, when they do see this when presence, when they feel the Spirit alive, when they see those fruits of the Spirit. Help <gasps> other people to name that. And as we name, evangelism is happening. 
Yeah, we don't have to we, even like say, what just happened now, people, was evangelism. Yeah. In case you we're, were wondering, like, stop, we just you know? evangelize. <laughs> we are the best. So as like, good Episcopalians, though, so we, yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to ask, right, as mm -hmm. good Episcopalians, you must have a 10-point checklist for me to follow so that I can do this right. You know, there's got to be a way for me to, to be able to, and, and mm -hmm. we're, what you're talking about is relational. Exactly. It is, there's no, there's no checklist on like rules on how do you become friends mm -hmm. with someone or how do you fall mm -hmm. in love. No. It's relational. And it is falling in love. It's falling in love with God and Christ, the God we know in Christ. It's us having that loving relationship and then having such a loving, liberating, life-giving relationship with God that we can't wait to help other people develop their own. And that's frankly the invitation part at the end of the definition is invite people to more. It's really us saying like lots of us are yearning. And we don't know where to take that yearning. Yeah. Lots of us have spiritual lives and, and we don't know how to name the spiritual seed that's coming to flower. So be one of the people in folks' lives helping them to name. And then when, they, when something lights up in them, help them to continue on that journey. Whatever more Beautiful. is. More might be more conversation, Lorenzo. More might be um, more music. You know, like saying like, wow, what you just said reminds me of a song that I love. And maybe it's a song from, from church, who knows? Or what maybe not, just, and, it, and that's right. perfectly fine. Exactly, but, but, but inviting people to see a life shot through with God. Got it. And to yearn yeah. for that spiritual intimacy for themselves. Looking for God in all things. It, exactly. It's a way of, of just noticing more. Yeah. And that in and of now. And deepening that relationship. Uh, you know, the, the way that you were just describing it, though, mm -hmm. I think that that would certainly also speak to younger audiences, like yeah. the millennials. We were yeah. again mm -hmm. uh, in a conversation we were having yesterday was all about the millennials think that we're inauthentic. Right. That we say one thing on Sunday, but we live something else during the mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. That we we're so out of touch. And yet you're talking about even if you don't have the right words. And I think part of that, by the way, is because when someone has tried to speak about like, I'm feeling these spiritual things, yeah. they've been told, no, that's wrong. The right. way you're describing it is wrong. That's right. not how God works. Use that's these not, words. That's right. Or use this theology. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And you're saying God works in many ways. Yes. Well, and again, that's what Episcopalians believe. You know, that we are being trained in the course of, of liturgy, in the course of spiritual practices, in the course of just loving relationship with God, with each other, and with creation, we are being trained so that we can see the world with kind of resurrection eyes. Yeah. And as we become those people, you know, then we can go around and help other people to see that way. I feel like that's... And That's see, honestly one of the points of, of, at least for me, it's, I mean, I didn't grow up Episcopalian, but when I finally discovered this group of Christians, like, I'm home. And it was because, like, with this group of people, I can, I can develop resurrection eyes. I can develop a resurrection heart. Um, I can develop, in the midst of this community, the capacity to love more. Um, and, and to be whatever it is that God has created me to be and to help other people to do the same in a wow, way that I feels liberating. can I just sit here and listen to you for like ever about evangelism? <laughs> Tell me more about Jesus. I just want to hear yeah. you speak. Well like, well, like, can we just acknowledge too that like so many people, millennials and others, they think that church equals being constricted. Mm. And if what we're talking about is a way that is loving, liberating, and life-giving, Please go tell somebody. Please go tell somebody. <laughs> you know, like in the world right now, we need we need liberation theology. Frankly, oh. like that's the other part. Like oh, I don't know if we're going to get off on yes. that, but I'm like, I love this church because this is where I see liberation theology, like, kind of like just like marbling the meat of this church. Ooh, there's, the, <laughs> you know, I mean, like that. That's that's what's there. And so, like, why wouldn't you tell the stories of a God that you know? through the work of liberation. Mm. Why wouldn't you tell the story? Amen. Like for me, if I'm seeking, naming, celebrating Jesus' loving presence in the stories of all people, and then inviting folks to more, where I see Jesus most powerfully is when I see people getting free, when I see people growing in love. And, and that means maybe I'm at the club, you know? <laughs> and I'm seeing people who are, 
who are connecting and celebrating life, and I'm able to say, this feels like God to me. Y'all wow. look like spirit people to me, and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come again? That's, that's And it doesn't evangelism. even have to be inside a church. And yeah. it doesn't even have to be like, that's the point. it could be in the supermarket. Yes. It could be, God yes. shows up in the weirdest places. Hey, and name, I think name the, it. The more we name that. Name it. Use your words. I think in every Episcopal service, by the way, we should, mm -hmm. we should have moments when people can come up and just name it. You know where I saw God this week? In traffic. Yeah. You know where I saw God? And just have these moments mm -hmm. of, what's it called in other traditions? It's, uh, testimony. Testimony, yes! Let, <laughs> Love testimony. Oh, no, I'm telling And honey, I grew up surrounded by the Baptist church. I grew up down south. So I, I definitely know the baggage that a lot of people are coming into our church yeah. with around evangelism. I felt manipulated often. Mm. I felt coerced. Um, when I was nine, I was told, you have to get baptized or you're going to hell. And what I wow. said to them was, if that's, if that's the way your God operates, I'm good. Thank you. I don't Thank need you. This. I'm, I'm out. That was age nine. Tap out. Tap out. I'm <laughs> Tap out. Thank out. you. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, but, but I just, I don't know. It just, it feels like there's, we know that there's another way. Yeah. And how about we lean into that joy, lean into that hope, lean into that liberation, and don't just live in reactive mode. You know, don't just live in the, again, the, well, Baptists do that, or somebody else does this. Like, you know what they also do? They love people enough to say so. Amen. So how about yeah. you go around loving people enough to say so too? Wow. But love them yeah. the way that you know how to love them. Oh. We can do this. We, oh, we totally We already can. have the hearts for it. We just need to like I'm get our hearts and our right words now. together. I'm just going to leave here. I'm just, yeah. I'm out of here now. <laughs> but I, I know we're, we're, we're going to run out of time soon before they tell us that we got to go. But uh, I wanted to ask you about the toolkit. Yes, 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 yes. So um, as we've been doing this work, and when I say we, I mean that there's this amazing team of you know, like part-time consultants and interns <laughs> and folks who are the Episcopal Evangelism team. And we, with a lot of other partners, have been working over the last year to create resources that feel like they respond to where Episcopalians are on the journey toward evangelism, toward this practice. And just today, actually, just like, whoo, Breaking yeah. news, Went this live. is happening. <laughs> this, hold on, just hand it to me. This just said, beep, 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 beep. Uh, no one's speaking in my ear. Oh, I don't have an earpiece. Well, okay, um, tell us the breaking news. That just, I mean, if you go to episcopalchurch.org slash evangelism, okay. um, like right on that front page, click on toolkit, evangelism toolkit. And what you'll find is a set of resources, especially curated, created and curated, for Episcopalians to embrace the practice of evangelism in several of the major spaces of our lives. First, there's a foundations section of the okay. toolkit. And there you'll find an evangelism charter for the Episcopal Church that says that lays, lays out the why. It lays out the why evangelism, like why do we need evangelism of our church? Hello, conversion for ourselves. Yeah. How do we need evangelism by the church? How does that happen? Yeah. And why do we need evangelism for the church? What is it that the church needs? that we will only discover if we are in the practice of evangelism. And so that charter is in the toolkit. There's also a wonderful two-page paper. All of these are very accessible materials. A two-page paper. It's not long treatises no, written no, no, by no. origin these in, are the, like... in the second century, <laughs> and we have to read them. So make Absolutely sure you do your Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, there's also a practical, an introduction to a practical theology of evangelism. Oh. And there you'll actually find the words I was saying, the seek, name, celebrate, Jesus loving presence, stories of all people, invite everyone to more. Each of those kind of gets broken, broken out in a really accessible way. Yeah. Two page, boom. That's foundations. Okay. Then there's a whole section on evangelism 101. Oh. And this is what I actually, I just am so excited. This is a, <laughs> it's, um, it's true. <laughs> um, it took a lot of work and a lot of, a lot of going back and forth. We were doing these trainings, Finding then we would the right come back words. and change it do more training, go with that feedback, change it again. Um, so but it's a training, two. yeah, it's a training evangelism 101 okay. that prepares people for, um, for practicing evangelism with an Episcopal heart. Um, and, and so that's all there. There's like 20 of these handouts. Wow. It's a training that our team can come to any diocese or conference and run. Um, but the handouts are also very, very kind of user-friendly. So that's Evangelism 101. 
And then there's also exploring evangelism through social media. Oh. So that's a section. There's a hashtag. Yeah. Um, there's a um, so there's an adult forum, but it's actually good for teens as well. So it's a forum for use after church or in between services, 45 minute forum on how do we explore evangelism using social media. And it's it's fantastic, it's accessible again, that's the key word. Yeah. Um, for people of any age to figure out how do we go into this, into the major space where people are living, sharing stories, seeking relationship, how do we show up online and and practice evangelism? And then finally, there is a section of the toolkit that's devoted to becoming beloved community. But it's especially, um, it's a campaign that we're launching called the Beloved Community Story Sharing Campaign. Oh. And, and this is a way for Episcopalians to learn to share and receive stories of faith, race, and difference. Wow. So it's actually a beautiful combination of our commitments to evangelism and reconciliation. That, um, and the idea is that we will get equipped as a church and the guidebook is there. And again, this is this has gone through wow, many. That, is a, that must have taken congratulations because I that know. must have taken a lot of work. <laughs> Here, I prep for this conference by like bringing my comb and my collar, and making sure I didn't forget it. You guys have put together yeah. this website. Well, congrats again. It is episcopalchurch.org forward slash evangelism. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And all of this is there. Everything and it is I've free just described can be and available downloaded there. in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. Oh my goodness. Um, it's it's all waiting and we'll keep adding and growing. Great. But, but already we feel like like we've we've looked at what a lot of our evangelical and other counterparts are doing and we've borrowed, adjusted, adapted. Made it we've Episcopal. Listened, yeah, and we've also listened to what Episcopalians are saying works for us. So this toolkit wow. we hope will be a blessing. Look at that. For our we church. broke some news here tonight as well, hey. Ken and Stephanie. Thank you so much for being with Thank us you, tonight. I, I swear, every time I speak with you, it is so energizing just to my own ministry and to my own being as a person and a follower of Jesus. Well, you do the same for a I lot just, of us, so it's, thank it's you, It's a brother. wonderful thing. And mm -hmm. although we're gonna let you go, I wanna do mention that uh, coming up after the break, and when I say break, it's a video that actually features a certain canon, someone you all know now, <laughs> but uh, it, it is actually about how the uh, our presiding bishop spoke about taking the church out into the streets and going to where the people are rather than waiting for people to come back in. But after, on the other side of that, we will have you may have met her in other conferences around, or you may have heard from her, but she's a great colleague of mine. She is known for the Scrappy Church Movement. So stick around after the break. We'll be joined by the Reverend Nancy Frausto. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. God bless you. Blessings to everyone. Yes. Yeah. A few years ago, a friend of mine who had been sent by the Mennonite community to plant and start a new congregation in Raleigh, North Carolina, congregation composed of people who live on the streets and people who live in homes. When I asked him what the thinking was behind that, he said, you know, the truth is, in this time in which we live, the church can no longer wait for the congregation to come to it. The church must go where the congregation is. Ashes to go. is about the church going where the congregation is. It's about the church going forth into the world. To spread and share the love of God that we know in Jesus Christ. It's about the church going into the world to be a presence and a reminder that God is in our land. And that this is God's world. And we are all God's children. And that is such a cool video that we were able to see there because that is the church at work these days. And 
Uh, Stephanie Spellers, Canon Stephanie Spellers was such a wonderful person. She actually even left me behind a little uh, magnet that's going to go on my wall about this work that we seek to that we seek, name, and celebrate Jesus' loving presence in the stories of all people and invite them to more. So thank you for that. And, you know, one of the people who actually helped her when she kept talking about the we and kept talking about her program group that helped her develop this, one of the people that, that helped her with this is, actually, I'm, I'm lucky because I get to live in the same city as her. This, this is a, a good friend of mine, someone who also will be featured in an upcoming documentary or something. We'll be talking about that a little bit. But uh, is the Reverend Nancy Frouster from the Diocese of Los Angeles. Nancy, it is so good to see you here. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I am so happy to be here. <laughs> it, it, and, and you seem a little bit more comfortable with the weather than I do, apparently, because you're not as, as bundled up as I have been. We even have the fire here and all for me. But, you know, you just, you, that's how you roll, Nancy. That's how you roll. I'm so laid back about <laughs> everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nancy, your movement, uh, and I've seen you in, at so many conferences, and, okay, I, I've got to tell the people that Nancy will say, I, I don't have anything prepared. This is the worst speech I'm, uh, or co conversation <laughs> I'm ever going to have. Then she goes out there, and people are always, like, bawling and crying. Oh, my God, she's so in love with God, and she, she's just the best. She came down from Mount Sinai. She's, like, awesome. And I'm like, wow. Imagine if she had prepared and was like, oh, this, I'm going to knock this one out. You are so good at the work of evangelism because I think, as, as we've heard in other conversations, you've been transformed. Tell us about your story. My whole story? Like, now, let's you, not go back to like, it all yeah, started. It all back started in, <laughs> back in Mexico. Back in, no, okay, so my story. God has been so amazing to me. God has placed so many wonderful people, mentors that have pushed me and challenged me and have given me the agency oh. to name. Jesus' loving presence in my life. Were you listening to our no, uh, Yeah, <laughs> You know, let me tell you. No, um, and, and but I, that's good. I say that, I say that because as a person of color, yeah. it is really hard sometimes to find your own agency, to find your own voice. And because of the wonderful mentors that I have found in the Episcopal Church, the wonderful people that have pushed me and challenged me, um, I have been able to find my voice and recognize that, wow, like Jesus is a part of all of this. Like Jesus' presence is in my life and the work that I do. Now it's my turn to go, go to places where it's scrappy, where it's hard, where people are suffering yeah. and say, you know what, guys? Um, even here, even in this place, you can find. Yes. You can, trust me, they're everywhere because what people want to know, what people really need to hear yeah. is that you are loved, you are worthy. And I can tell you this because I know that I am loved and I am worthy because God is so freaking awesome. Amen. God is love. Yeah. So let's talk about this God of love. Let's talk about this God that wants you to be happy and be at your best, that doesn't want you to suffer. Um, and okay. I'm going to pull up my sleeves for this oh, one. Oh, watch out. It's the, about to get scrappy. The earrings would come off the if you had The earrings would come off, the hair is oh. up, the whole deal. Um, right now, people think of Christians in really negative, in really negative terms. Yeah, And they I think agree. about a God that will punish you, a God that will send you to hell, a God where you will never be good enough. And so many people are told every single day that they're not good enough because of the color of their skin, because of their language, because they don't make enough money, because this and that or whatever, because of their immigration status. And we as a church have the opportunity to be like, eh, <laughs> actually, yes, you are perfect because you are a beloved child of God. Amen. So I work with people that have just heartbreaking stories. Yeah. And they have also taught me to find God in that suffering. Find the presence of God. Because we're not alone. Even in our darkest moments, we are not alone. So being able to seek God in all those places, yeah. name, and then celebrate the fact that we are not alone, that we are love, but wow. I think at the core of what you're saying is that that transformation happens when you do accept that you're loved by God. 
right? That transformation in your own heart, which then allows you to see the rest of the world like, oh, look, there's God over there, even though there, there may be suffering or, oh, I'm still being oppressed, but I don't give up that hope in that God who's still with me, who still loved me, who still made me. Yes, and there's going to be moments where you're going to want to give up. Unfortunately, this, does, this is not like a one-shot deal. It's a process. What? I don't accept Christ and everything turns out roses from there? I'm out of here. What? That was Dude, promised. I'm, there's no rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> I am sorry to break the news to you. Yeah. But it's a process that you go through. And, you, and that's why we need to keep repeating it over and over again to others and to ourselves. Um, and that's why we need to make sure that we are out there doing the work of evangelism. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Scrappy. Let's get, let's get scrappy and let's get very practical here. Okay. How would a scrappy church, how would a scrappy person that's out there that's watching us right now, how would they find their way to become evangelists under this, this new paradigm, this new way of looking at it that it's about seeking God in everyone? How, how would you do that? So how? a scrappy person is already made for evangelism. Let me tell you why. A scrappy person is someone that has been dealt the worst hand, that has been written out of the story because they're never going to make it, right? But a scrappy person has been like beat up. I think of Rocky, right? Ah. Uh, so has been beat up, has been down for the count, is like about to give it up, like it's over, right? <laughs> Rocky gets up swinging. Rocky wins. Rocky is scrappy. Scrappy people, we get up swinging. So we get up and we go out. And even though it's so hard to do evangelism, it's so hard because you might get rejected. That's right. You might get pushed away. But you get up and you continue to tell that story. The story of God, of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit in your life. And there will be those moments. There will be those people that will hear that story and will start to think about their own story and will want to share it. And that's when we invite them to more. It's like a, a moment of connection. A moment of connection. And, and when we say invite, like, don't get it twisted. You can't invite them to church. That's a, that's, <gasps> that's fine. Invite them to church. But this is not about making more Episcopalians. Amen. Okay? We are not in the business of making Episcopalians. At least I'm not. I'm in the business of being a disciple and creating more disciples. Wow. This is not about SAA numbers and getting more, more, you know, more butts in the pews. ASA means average Sunday attendance for those of you watching us at home who may not know. And that is how they measure churches. But, but you're right, though. A lot of people think that evangelism is only about getting more people in the door. No. And it is not. It's about getting our butts out of the door. Amen. And being out in the community and, be, and getting to know our neighbor and building those relationships that are our life transforming because Jesus is in all of that. Like God is already at work in all of this. We just need to make sure that we are brave enough and we're scrappy enough to go out there and really save lives because that's what we're doing. And the reason why I say that is because people in this church, people that have not been afraid, like they were the ones that saved my life. And want to talk about a testimony? There's a testimony in there. Do you want to say more about that? I'm good. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to drop that little thing. I'm just going to drop that. They saved my life, time. but uh, after the break. No. <laughs> you know, what I will say is that, as, as I said before, as a person of color, yeah. as an undocumented immigrant in the church, um, there has been places where I have been rejected and pushed away. And over and over again, the Episcopal Church doesn't always get it right but they keep trying. And this church has been there for me and for so many of my undocumented brothers and sisters. They have pulled us out of the darkness. They have given us hope. Amen. So that's why I say that when church is right, when church is done right, when people are really there for you, where they rec when they recognize the presence of Jesus in their lives and in the lives of those who are different, those who don't have documents, those who are of different color skin, speak different languages. When you are there for them, when you hear the stories, when you celebrate those stories, when you celebrate those lives, it makes us remember, even in our darkest moments, that we are worthy, that we are loved. And there's people that are going to always be there for us because they recognize a loving God. Because God is Awesome. Snap, snap. So uh, to, to, to make a point, though, I think which goes so well with what you were just saying, can someone be an evangelist 
if they themselves have not been transformed by Christ? Dun, dun, dun. Aha, that's the cliffhanger, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think anything is possible. Yeah. See, and I was going to say no. I don't think they. I don't think they I, can. I think. Well, I don't but, think that someone that hasn't really found that moment, uh, that hasn't, whose life hasn't been transformed by Christ, who I, it would be the equivalent if if I won the lottery. If I have a crappy job and I drive a car that barely moves, it looks more like the Flintstones cars, and I have a bad boss, and I and I live in a really bad place, and I win five hundred million dollars in the lottery. Please. Uh, I wouldn't then go back the next day and go to the crappy job. I wouldn't then live in the bad place. I wouldn't have the bad car. My life would change. And I think we won the lottery when Christ rose from the dead. That is the, the truest thing that I can tell you. And the life has been transformed. My life has been transformed by that. And that's what I go out there and tell people. So that's why I think it's hard for people to, to be evangelists if they themselves haven't been transformed. If they're just like a transactional Christian, I went to church on Sunday, punched in, punched out. Well, so, okay, yes, to all of what you said, awesome. And... And, but wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more, yes. And everyone is being transformed all the time because yeah, God is, is at true. work. So what I would say is they need to recognize that transformation. And that's where we come in as evangelists, help them recognize that transformation sometimes, you know? Seek, name, celebrate. Seek, name, celebrate. Um, it's catchy. Now I'm getting, I'm starting oh, to understand no, right? this. Yeah, but by helping people recognize that moment of transformation, that moment of Jesus' loving presence, yeah. they're going to be like, wow, I've had more than one moment. I have been transformed. Because I think God is at work at all times transforming our lives. I just think we don't, we don't recognize it, right? We don't have the eyes to recognize where God was here and God was here and God was here and here and here and there. We don't know how to name it. Yeah, what? seek name. Celebrate! <laughs> I, now I see why you were part of the committee that put it all together. It's all starting to come together for us here. Wow, that's that's great. And you're leading one of the workshops, right? I am. And which one is it? I am leading Evangelism on a Shoestring. Evangelism on a Shoestring. What time? In the morning. In the morning. <laughs> And that's the Nancy I know and love. In the morning, sometime after I make my, my I just I, show up. after I get coffee and someone points me in the right direction, right? No, I'm sure uh, I'm. That's one of the ones that I'm looking forward to to seeing. But it will be also simulcast. It will be on our on our website. Uh, so again, all the things that we sort of have gone through is that evangelism. The the toolkit, the evangelism toolkit, is at episcopalchurch.org forward slash evangelism. I am sure by now. Our crackpot team has put it all on the, the little chat rooms, and it's all there. Um, by the way, if you're watching us from far and away, let us know where you're at. I'd love to see where, where all of you are at watching us uh, and what you think of the, of the programming that we're doing. Because it is live, unlike my other show that I get to say, God, I made a mistake. So <laughs> ev EpiscopalChurch.org forward slash evangelism. EvangelismMatters.org is where you can catch all of the workshops that will be broadcast. Uh, and including archives of this very own show, Inside Evangelism Matters. Uh, so what's going to happen now is we're going to take a break because Nancy and I are going to come back. If you're watching us and you are Spanish speaker, Nancy y yo vamos a hablar en español para tener una conversación también para las personas que hablan español. Pero if you... Pero... And I'm going all Spanglish on you. If you don't speak Spanish, stay tuned because coming up at 7 o'clock, presiding Bishop Michael Curry and President of the House of Deputies, Gay Jennings, will be leading the worship this evening here from Cleveland, Ohio. And that is coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. So until tomorrow night when we'll have our next show in English, or until 7 o'clock when we'll see you for our, our special broadcast of the Worship and Praise, Thanks very much for joining us from Cleveland, Ohio. I'm Father Lorenzo Labrija, and this has been Inside Evangelism Matters. <laughs>